Welcome to the Positive Pants Podcast. Mindset, motivation, and inspiration to help you find your positive pants. Let go of negative thinking and stop living for the weekend with your host, Fran Excel. So welcome to the show. As always, it's Fran Excel Mindset Coach helping you find your very own pair of positive pants so you can get out of your own way and live a life that you love. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm very grateful you've chosen to put me in your earbuds today. Please do hit the subscribe button so you don't miss anything and do leave me a review. I love, love, love reading them and it really helps me get found by other people who need to hear what I share. I'd also love you to email me your mindset and productivity questions or topics you'd love me to cover um, to hello at franexcel.com because I know a lot of you think I'm inside your heads because you tell me all the time. But if I don't know what you need, I can't give it to you. So let me know. So the power of language and watching what you say. Ooh. Language is so freaking powerful and we completely underestimate how it can shape our world and how, you know, we can really take its power for granted, right? So in this episode, I'm going to merely be scratching the surface of what is possible for you when you can learn to master the words that you use. So words have the power to create images and thoughts in your mind and the mind of those that you're talking to. Language can affect the way you feel about something. It can elicit emotions, which will affect your actions. And the majority of this all happens at an unconscious level. So the words that we use can give us power can give it to us, we can take it away in an instant. For example, I can versus I can't, and I'll go into that a little bit more later. They can pull us forward or keep us stuck exactly where we are. The words we use can and do shape our reality. Hmm. When we truly understand this power that we all have access to, right? We can completely change our worlds and create new ones that serve us far better. Awesome, right? Sounds so easy. <laughs> so nothing really has any meaning apart from the meaning that you give it. Yeah, nothing really has any meaning apart from the meaning that you give it. What do I mean by this? We all take something different from someone's words based on our own maps of the world. So what means one thing to you can mean something totally different to another person. So politicians are a great example of this. They use language where the person, each person listening will take something completely different from it, enabling them to actually influence a nation without really saying anything at all, right? So sorry to bring it up, (laughs) but take Brexit and Trump, okay? The two things that were taken from that is take back control and make America great again. What do either of those statements actually mean? right? It means something completely different to every single person listening to it. So you can see how it could, you know, be easy to get people behind the message. It's also making a big assumption, A, that we don't have control, or B, that America's not already great. Yeah? We can assume a huge amount based on language that we use. We also read other people's minds and hear what we think they've said not necessarily what they have said and vice versa. So you can see, you will see this in daily life in every single communication that you take part in. So then your words and thoughts become the stories that you tell yourself. And I've been talking a lot about stories and the stories that you tell yourself become your beliefs and your beliefs form the kind of actions you will or won't take. And then that becomes your reality. So when you're aware of this, You can choose to look at things from many, many other angles that you just wouldn't have seen before and choose which way is going to serve you best. So the next thing I want to talk about is we talk so much about what we don't want. And when we do that, that's exactly where the focus goes. Yeah. And I'm sure if you've been following me for a while, you know by now where focus goes, energy flows. So guess what happens? You get exactly what you said you would. A big old, see, told you told you that would happen. And then it's reinforced in this loop that what you believe is fact. And then it just becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. And why would you challenge that? Right? It's fact. Something else to be aware of is your brain really doesn't hear the word don't. So say you're telling yourself, I don't want to fail. You're actually programming, I want to fail. 
into your brain. And the words fail and failure are another episode in themselves, of which I have already done. So I will link that back up. The example that's often used for this is don't think of a pink elephant. And what is in your head right now? And the same thing when someone's carrying, for example, a hot drink and someone says, don't spill it then what tends to happen? <laughs> the things that we say instantly transfer into, an Im into images in our mind. So when you hear don't spill your tea, you get an image of yourself spilling your tea as if it's already happened. And then what you're doing is programming into your mind that that is what you want to happen. Not ideal, right? So the way to get around this is to catch ourselves in those don't moments and change it to what we do want. So what I've done is a few little simple switcheroos for you on this topic. So what I want you to do is start to try and notice when you're using these. Challenge yourself with a little switch and see how it feels. Little changes, big difference. So the first one is instead of I can't, how about I can't yet? Or asking yourself, how can I? Open your thinking to opportunities rather than closing them off and shutting it down as fact, yeah? how can I? Simples. Instead of should, how about could? I should go to the bank. I could go to the bank. You know, whatever, whatever you, wherever you're using should. The word should is racked with guilt, the little bit of shame thrown in for good measure, and it takes power away from you, all those things you should do. Really? Should you? Or could you? It's an option. Should, should, should. And then, instead of could, how about can? I can go to the bank, whatever it is. Take it that one step further and show yourself what's possible. Using can shows you, you can, hooray! <laughs> so the next one is instead of have to, how about get to? So we can moan a lot about certain things and when you have to do something it suggests you didn't really want to for a start but also takes away your feeling of choice we do have a choice even in the things we don't think we have a choice we have a choice for example i have to pay my tax bill you actually don't there are consequences sure but plenty of people don't you get to you get to pay your tax bill because you've earned loads wowzers just shifts that thinking around for you and takes away that lack of choice and gives you choice back and also gives you a little bit of gratitude thrown in as well. So the next one, instead of I can't afford it, how about it's not a priority right now? And instead of I don't have time, how about it's not a priority right now? So these two are part and parcel. They do come hand in hand because we, a lot of us say them very often can tell I'm watching my language now. <laughs> but we can find time and find money for the things that are truly a priority for us. So give yourself your power back and appreciate the choice that you have. The more you tell yourself you can't afford it or you don't have time, the more evidence you're going to find to support that. We know by now, if you've been following me for a while, how our brain likes to think it's keeping us safe and it likes to do good deeds and tell us that we're right. But when we're telling it negative things, hey presto, we're right, yeah? So, Instead of never and always, how about sometimes? Challenge when you use these words because you're telling yourself something is fact when it's usually not true. Again, it's giving you some power back. It opens you up to possibility, opens you up to opportunity rather than shutting things down as fact when you wouldn't even look for another way because why would you? It's a fact. And then the next thing is challenge those negative I am statements. I am lazy. I am stupid. You know, attaching something to your identity becomes a limiting belief. For example, I am stupid or I am a failure. Really? Has there been a time you've known that not to be true? Have you had good exam results? Have you ever got a job where you got the job over a load of other candidates? Uh, is it doing something creative and people telling you that something's amazing? It could be anything. I am statements are powerful. They're powerful in the negative, but they're also powerful in the positive. So start giving yourself those powerful I am statements. Yeah. If you want to make something about your identity, that's a good way to do it. Now, notice when you're attaching meaning to something. 
For example, not hitting my target means I'm a failure. This is just dying to be challenged right there. Yeah. But it's a very, very common thing. Does that, does it mean that? Does not hitting a target once mean you're a failure? There could have been a million reasons why you didn't hit it. Does it mean you're a failure in all areas of your life? No. <laughs> and a similar one to this is if X happened, then Y happens. For example, if I don't hit my revenue target on my launch, then my business is a failure and I'll have to get a job. Really? Really? That's your only option. Does it really mean that? You're attaching meaning to things. If this happens, then that happens. Challenge it. It's what I'm always trying to get you guys to do. Challenge the way you're thinking. Challenge that inner critic. We know what it's up to now. If you've been following me for a while, you know what it's up to. Yeah? Challenge it. So you can see just how easy it is for a couple of words to completely change the situation for you and how quickly those words can turn into a hard and fast belief, which will affect the actions that you take and create your reality. Like I said, this is literally scratching the surface. Yeah, I just wanted to give you a few actionable, simple switcheroos that you can use. And I would love what I would love for you to start doing is to just start noticing these, start using the switcheroos and see what a difference it makes. See how much more empowered you feel. See how much more open-minded you feel. It can be hard to notice these things on your own, so don't beat yourself up if it takes a while. You know, This is where coaching is amazing for holding up that mirror, but the more you practice, the better at it you'll get. The more you'll change your language habits, and then your world, woo big subject but hallelujah prayer emoji hands for when you can understand this stuff because it's incredible and it is simple simple life tools so if you got value from this and you know in your gut that now is the time to step up and start rewiring your thinking and changing things for yourself then book in a free discovery call so we can work out what needs to happen to get you from where you're at right now to the action taking success you know you can be. And if you want my eyes and ears on your problems, I work with people one on one and through my proactive pants mastermind. So stop waiting for if and when and decide to change things now because you can. And as always, I hope that was helpful. So any questions, just let me know. And as always, I will see you next week. Bye.